This is Algebra 2, Chapter 4, Section 4, in which we will study complex numbers. Now, we all know that you can't take the square root of a negative number. Try it on your calculator sometime. Put in negative 4, hit the square root button, and see what happens. Your calculator will give you some variation of error. That's because your calculator only thinks in terms of real numbers. But, just in case real numbers weren't enough, sometimes we have to work with these square roots, and we have a way to do it. It's called imaginary numbers. Okay. And the imaginary number is i. And i is defined to be the square root of negative 1. Okay. We're going to have to practice breaking down our square roots. I'm going to emphasize here, and people are not going to listen, and, and they're going to get things wrong and complain about it. I'm going to emphasize to you, I don't want decimal answers. Decimals are approximations here. I don't want an approximate answer. I want the legitimate answer. So you're going to have to break down your square roots like you've learned how to over the years. Grabbing a calculator isn't going to get the job done. Or at least not directly. So we're going to have here the square root of negative 125. Well, we can break that down. The negative can come out here as a negative 1 in its own square root. 125 is 25 times 5. I know the square root of negative 1. It's I. I know the square root of 25. It's 5. So I get 5i times the square root of 5. Okay. Take a minute, try this one, the square root of negative 18. Well, again, if we break it down, that's negative 1 times, neg times 9 times 2. Square root of negative 1 is i, square root of 9 is 3, 3i three squared of 2. And again, I'm going to repeat it, no decimals here. Decimals will be considered incorrect. You need to show that you can break down radicals. Now, we have already looked at that i is equal to neg the square root of negative 1. If we square both sides of that equation, that takes the square root off. So i squared is negative 1. If we multiply by an i now, that'll get us i cubed. Negative 1 times i would be negative i. And if we multiply by another i, we would get negative i squared. i squared is negative 1, so the opposite of negative 1 is 1. Then it repeats itself after that. i to the fifth would be i to the fourth times i. Gets us back to i because i to the fourth is 1. i six would be i to the fourth times i to the second. 1 times negative 1. i to the seventh goes negative i. i to the eighth goes back to 1. And it keeps cycling through. Okay. Let's do a little bit of uh, work with this. Negative 5i times 2i. Well, that's negative 10i squared. But we know what i squared is. i squared is negative 1. Negative 10 times negative 1 is 10. Okay. You cannot leave i squared or anything higher in your answer. You have to clean up. Now, here's one that tends to throw people for a loop. They want to multiply negative 12 times negative 3, get positive 36, and then go from there. But you can't quite do that. The i needs to come outside for each one of those negatives. i times i is i squared. 12 times 3 is 36. i squared is negative 1. The square root of 36 is 6, so we get negative 6. Okay. Another thing they like to throw at us is giving us a big value of i, i to the 34th, let's say. 
Well, I to the 34th, I could break that down into a whole bunch of I4s, eight of them to be exact. Eight times four is 32, and then I have two I's left over. Well, I to the fourth is one. One to the eighth power is still one. I squared is negative one. One times negative one is negative one. No matter what they give you here, you can take out enough fours to get down to something you can work with. Okay. Let's tangle with this one. We have x squared equals or plus 121 equals zero. We can't factor it because it's a plus instead of a minus. So we'll bring the 121 over and take the square root. The square root of the negative will give us i. The square root of 121 is 11. And this is another important thing that you, a lot of you will miss because you don't pay attention to details. When you take the square root, you get a positive and a negative answer. There's two answers here, positive 11i and negative 11i. If you don't have both answers, it's wrong. Pay attention to detail. Positive and negative 11i. Now, when we talk about imaginary numbers by themselves, that's one thing. When we add in real numbers with it, then you get something called complex numbers. Okay. So something like 8 plus 2i is a complex number because it has a real part and it has an imaginary part. When they give us an equation like this to deal with, that's an important idea. We want the real part to be equal to the real part. And then the imaginary part, notice I deliberately blocked out the i, equals the imaginary part on this one. So we get one equation that's the real parts, and one equation that's the imaginary parts without the i's. And this we know how to solve. We can move things around and get a value for x and we can move things around and get a value for y. Okay. Don't let the i's be a big distraction to you. All they do is tell you which terms to match up. Okay. Now, our arithmetic is easy to do. If we want to add these things, it's just collect like terms. 5 plus 2 is 7. Negative 7i plus 4i is negative 3i. Okay. Subtraction works the same way, you just have to remember to distribute the negative. Take a second, give it a shot, see what you get. When I distribute the negative, now it becomes something I can collect up easily, 5 plus 4i. Multiplying works the same way as regular distributing does. We'll distribute the 2 to each term, 2 times 9, 2 times negative 3i. 4i times 9, 4i times negative 3i. Okay. Now, i squared we know is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 12 is positive 12. Collecting those up and then collecting the numbers, and we get 30 plus 30i. Okay. Again, remember, you can't leave i squared or anything higher. You have to break it apart. Give this one a shot and then see how you did on it. Distributing things out, 8 times i squared is negative 8. So the time we collect everything up, we get negative 2 minus 16i. Okay. Now look at these two complex numbers, a plus bi and a minus bi. Or if you look here, 6 plus 4i and 6 minus 4i. They're alike except for the middle sign. In that situation, they're called complex conjugates. Okay. And we use conjugates to get i's out of the denominator. 
i's are basically square roots, remember, it's i is the square root of negative 1. So we can't leave an i in the denominator, we have to clean it up, and to do that we use the conjugate. We have 2 plus i over 1 minus i. Well, we have to multiply by the conjugate of the bottom, like we did back in chapter 0 when we did these radical things. 0, 8, or 0, 9, somewhere in there. Okay. The conjugate of 1 minus i is 1 plus i. If you do it to the bottom, you have to do it to the top. Now we can distribute. Distribute out the top. Distribute out the bottom. Okay. Remember, i squared is negative 1. Now combine those together and then put in negative 1 for i squared. And we combine those together, i minus i cancels. Negative of negative 1 is plus 1. Now it's a piece of cake. Okay. And this is your final answer. You cannot leave an i in the bottom. If you do, it's wrong. Okay. So give this one a shot. And then check what you got. Okay. Again, we have to multiply by the conjugate of the bottom, 2 minus i. And if you do it to the bottom, you have to do it to the top. Distributing, and I'm just going to work on the top first. Okay. 6i squared gives me negative 6. 8 minus 6 gives me the 2. And then we'll work on the bottom. Negative i squared is positive 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. And that was the last one. I thought I had one more. So a lot of things going on with i. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down so you can ask in class, and we will see you in class.